All right, lines. So announced this morning, continuing on the anime broadcast celebration campaign, Yuha Ichigo Orohime are returning with a guaranteed pity ticket on Step 25. The banner itself is available tomorrow morning and will be lasting until the 4th of November. So right from the get-go, as always, whenever we are close to an upcoming end of month banner, that will be getting announced on the 28th. I recommend waiting to see what end of month is going to be first and foremost before you do decide to summon on this banner. The last thing you want to do is spend all your orbs and then your potential favorite character releases a couple days later. The banner itself features nine characters, so of course the three new ones with a somewhat decent selection of fillers here, I will be honest. Like, obviously they do feature old characters. It more so features Aiden, a still perfectly usable character, some upcoming resurrectable characters, and some decent links. But then again, that's basically in every thousand ship bundle banner. So in terms of the filler pool, it's nothing unique, nothing that you won't see in any potential upcoming thousand ship bundle banner. With that said, though, having a look at the characters once more, we have Ichigo, a heart Soriper with the Soriper and also Stelmer to kill ability. At this point in time, the characters are approaching a year old, but Ichigo is honestly held up really well. Damage output is very high with Frenzy plus 2. When you inflict a status limit, you will get a 80% spiritual pressure boost. And Kim Mighty does have an increased chance to inflict weakening and last rate against any Soriper or Quincy. And once you do inflict a status limit, you then do 150% more damage to the status afflicted enemies. 90% coming from the weakening and 60% coming from the last rate. Alongside that though, he's got some good utility effects. He's immune to every star element. He has long stride, an extra flush step, and is also a really good soul rate for any hard character. He's got a really good strong attack kit with a beam into a lunge into a two-stage charge strong attack, which has him let off a get a good GG show. He's a fairly simple character, but honestly, he's still one of the best characters in the entire game, especially within the heart attribute. Since I pulled this character at the end of the year, I've been using him a lot, especially of course right now in the melee summer to guild quest, where this guild quest in particular does lack usable SP units. Ichigo being one of the only few ones, but also the main SP character. So if you do want to summon for characters that will improve your guild quest score, I would say this Ichigo is almost a must-have for the melee stammer to guild quest. Definitely can get a usage out of him in the melee super guild quest, but that guild quest in particular has characters like Yashiro Unohana, but you can use him in there if you don't own her. But even so, outside of guild quest, he's a whole lot of fun. Really good strong attack here plays well together, especially when he does have killer, and you can even use him in arena. Overall, could be the prize of the banner, really depends on how you're looking at it, but still a very solid character, and the same, of course, can be said about Fowers and G-Blood War Yuha. This character was quite big at the time, granted it was only 10 months ago, but it still is really cool and fun to have a playable SP Yuha bug. In this case, though, he is a mind no affiliation character with the hollow and also no affiliation kill abilities. When it comes to his damage output, he has a lot going for him since he was given Frenzy plus 2, a 40% Berserker, and when you do inflict a status limit, in this case weakening, you get an 80% spiritual pressure boost. That's not all though, because he does have 4 enemies defeated bonuses, well, after 20 enemies defeated, he'll get 20% more melee damage. After 40 enemies defeated, he'll get a 40% Berserker. 60 defeats gives him 60% devastation. And keep in mind, the character itself already has 60% devastation built in. This is Soul Bomb damage, by the way. And then after 80 enemies defeated, he would then get an additional Soul Bomb. And again, keep in mind, he does have weakened defense, allowing you to do 30% more damage. So he's a character that's already strong as is, that gets even stronger the more enemies you do defeat. He has great utility effects, immune to every status element, long stride, extra flash step, and also most importantly, he recharges any mind character strong attacks in between stages, making him a really good character in Limit Breaker, making him a very fun character in just overall content. But one thing I do want to touch upon is the extra summon that you do get after 80 enemies defeated. This is a skill that might be even more useful in the future, in an upcoming Guild Quest update, where there will potentially be more than 50 enemies, allowing you to get that extra soul bomb and making him potentially even better. He has a great strong attack kit, especially that SA2, which they track in Vortex. Great visuals to boot. It's you, Herbark. Still an amazing character to have, especially in the year 2024. And then lastly, our final character is Orohime, a technique human with the Captain Kill ability, and until recently has been running rampant in the Bray Battle meta due to the fact that she does have Flyer plus 2, but for the first 10 seconds, she has Flyer plus 3. Under her stamina, she decreases her damage taken by 50%, but also increases her normal attack damage by 50%. She ignores invincibility. She has invincibility. She can prevent Bray Battle healing. And most importantly, when she is defeated, more so when her HP goes down to zero, she would then become invincible for five more seconds. 
due to the fact that she also does have a debuff and it is also ranged, it has allowed her to become one of the more dominating Brave Battle characters in the game, especially in a meta where most characters don't have killer against her. Of course, recently we did just get Renji, who is a direct counter towards her, but of course, with any new meta Brave Battle unit, it doesn't mean Orohime is bad by any means. She just now goes perfectly alongside Renji. She still almost guarantees to be any character you put her against, unless that character is Renji. So still a character was something for to make your Brave Battle team better. But at the same time, given the fact that she is a ranged character, you can use her outside of Brave Battles and you can even get a usage out of her in Guild Quest content. As for the other characters in this selection, Aizen again is still an amazing normal attack damage unit. Despite being over two years old, many and myself included would still consider him the best normal attack damage character in the entire game. He's super fun with his gauge mechanic, giving him more normal attack damage when it is formed, reducing his strong attack cooldowns so you can benefit from a team boost and barrier, weakening on every attack with an increased chance, which therefore allows him to get an 80% attack boost. If you do enjoy playing with normal attack damage characters, Aizen is the best character you can get right now, in all honesty. Rukia, a really cool unit because it is her actively using her Bankai. Damage output is lacking compared to some of the newer characters. However, she is scheduled to get a resurrection in the middle of December. So if you don't have her, it might be good to get it in advance. Likewise, with Ishin, not really so good right now could become a useful link because he is getting resurrected this time next month. Now, now has a use in the range of Sparta Guild Quest, albeit not really the greatest. However, she is a team booster. Most important though, a really good link for any hard character. 20% strong attack damage with recharge is never not going to be good. And then now is never not going to be good when it comes to being a soul trait. She's always going to be good for any hard character, including the Ichigo in this summon. Likewise, to a certain extent, we also have Senjumaru, a resurrectable character. Potential good link for Ichigo since he wants to always inflict lacerate and send you Mara as a soul trait lets you do 20% more damage to the lacerated enemies and then lastly we have Mayuri who's also another good soul trait in this case recharge and more damage out full stamina so for the most part this banner in a nutshell is three returning characters that are still great a really good normal attack damage character and then two soon to be resurrectable units and three resurrectable units that offer more orbs potentially good soul traits too so as always if you are missing the three returning characters Ichigo, Yuha and also Orihime I would recommend summoning the banner format itself is nothing crazy it's it's a normal banner format. If anything, if you are new, maybe go to step five, test your luck if you need to. Every five steps guarantees you a thousand your blood war unit. And then of course, if you do go to step 25, you are guaranteed the character of your choice, Ichigo, Yuha, or Orohime. As always, like when I believe it last returned, it's great to see this return with the pity ticket. Every time this banner does come back, I know many people that, that go to step 25. So it's nice to know that if they do decide to do that, or if someone new decides to do that, you are guaranteed one of the characters, right? Trust me, it's a lifesaver. And this is coming from someone that did 50 steps on this banner when it first came out and didn't get a single Yuha buck outside of the guarantee ticket. So really good to see that return. But the question is more so, should you be summoning on this banner right now? Again, I don't blame you for summoning. And keep in mind what I'm about to say is a gamble. But these characters are about to hit one year old at the end of the year. There's a decent chance they do become fillers on the end of year banner. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed to happen. But we saw with the anniversary characters, Yachiru, Chojura, and also Yamamoto. They were on part two of the anniversary and even came back a month ago during the anime broadcast celebration with Rukia, Renji, and also Byakuya. So Palmies does say summon on this banner if you want them. Of course, they're great units to have. And in two months' time, they're still going to be great units to have. However, there is a chance they do become fillers on the upcoming end of year banner. So if you want to take the risk, it might be worth waiting and skipping this banner in the hopes for them to become fillers in just two months' time. Even then, even having said that, these are all units that are great to even get duplicates of. So even if you do pull for them right now, and let's say you get all three of them, but then end up getting duplicates of them in two months time during the end of year banner. That's not necessarily a bad thing, right? These are all great units that I've duped out. One out of five, two out of five, max transcended. They're fun and great units. So I would say, yeah, the banners worth summoning on. Maybe don't go too deep though, considering the fact that they could become fillers in two months time. If you want to skip this banner with the idea of hoping for them to be on the end of year banner, then by all means, go ahead and do that, right? It's not a bad idea. At the same time though, if you also want to wait to see what end of month is first, that'll be getting announced on Monday the 28th. I would also recommend do that. I'm skipping this banner because I already went quite deep on it. I have a max transcendent Ichigo and also Orihime, but I would also love to get Yuha dupes, but I will try and get those dupes when he is a filler in a potential new banner. Either way though, hope you like to enjoy the video. Let me know if you are something in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.